Hi there. In this video, we are going to dive deeper into Premiere Productions. And in particular, I want to talk a little bit about what the icons are actually doing when you're working inside of the production panel. So this is going to explain a lot of what the green pencil, the hollow and solid icons, and the lock icons actually mean inside of your production panel. So to get started, I'm here inside of one of my productions, and I'm actually working with a different editor. This is an editor named Mike Burton. Um, you'll notice in the production panel, there's really two main columns. There's the name column for all the different pr uh, production items, and then there's a project lock uh, column. And this lock column actually displays the names of any editors you're collaborating with. Anybody who has uh, parts of the production open, their name will display here. Now the key thing about this name field, I want to take a moment to just cover this. If I go into my uh, Premiere settings and look under the collaboration portion of preferences, you'll see that the username is actually found in this area here called project locking. And there's a tiny field here, and I currently just have my first and last name kind of running together here. This is simply a text field. Um, if you ever need to modify this or make changes to it, I recommend doing it when your productions are closed because whenever you open a production, it's going to be locked to whatever username is placed in that field. But I've seen some very creative uses of this field. If just having the name is not enough, I've seen people put in edit bay one, edit bay two, edit bay three, so they know what door to knock on. I've even seen people put phone numbers or extensions into this field. It's completely customizable, whatever will work for your team, uh, so that if you need to find or get into a locked project, uh, you know who to call, uh, who to contact to tell them, hey, are you actively working in that or is it just sitting in the background? Close it, I need to get into it. Um, that's how you work with the project lock column is it's designed for you to give you the information necessary to know who is working on what. Now, as far as the icons are concerned, you'll notice that there's really um, a few different states these project icons can actually be in. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this sound effects project here that Mike's got open um, just to kind of showcase this. Icons are either hollow, indicating I don't have that open, or solid, indicating that that's a project that I currently already have open inside of my copy of Premiere. From there, the icons either have no uh, lock indication, meaning, hey, it's up for grabs. Anybody can get into that. Uh, nobody is currently using it. Or it'll have a red lock icon. That means somebody else on your team has that project open and is making changes to it. Uh, finally, if I have a project open and I'm making changes to it, it will have a green pencil. You can have as many projects open as you want. Um, you know, again, in the nature of organizing a production, tiny bite-sized projects, having a bunch of them is preferable to having like one massive project with all of your media that takes forever to open. It's better to break it up into smaller chunks and open multiple projects. Now the key about who can make changes to a project, it's first come, first served. Uh, the first person who opens up a project gets the green pencil and they're the ones who can go in and make changes to it. So if I double click on this, you can see I already have this project open. If I right click on an item here, I can cut this, I can copy it, I can rename it, I can modify it, I can do all the things uh, because I have full read write privileges on this particular project. Now this project is a sound effects project. Uh, Mike Burton currently is inside of it editing. And if I double click on this, I still have access to it. But when I right click on these items, you'll notice cut, uh, clear, duplicate. A lot of options are actually grayed out. That's exactly what I would expect. I don't have write privileges to this. I don't have the ability to modify it and make changes to it. But I do have the ability to edit with it. So if I have a different project open, in this case, I've got my full edit aspect project. This has my editing sequence, which I have open here. I have read write privileges to this sequence. I have read only privileges to this source media, but that doesn't prevent me from double clicking on one of these sound effects. And I'll just expand this out a little bit. I could come in here, you know, mark an in point, mark an out point. And if I want to cut this into one of my sound effects tracks, 
you know, in this case, I'm just going to do the, uh, the lazy way. I'll drag it and drop it instead of using insert or overwrite. But you can see it works the exact same way. Um, I have the ability to make changes to the project that I have the green pencil for. Now, one thing I can't show you today, but I just want you to be aware of, we try and let you know when a project is locked in a lot of different ways. And there's even a notification that comes up if somebody who has the project open in read write mode makes changes and saves those changes. So first off, you'll notice in this project, uh, here at the name of the project, it's showing me the editor that has the project currently open in read write mode. It's showing me a lock icon here. So not just in the production panel, this is like all the projects at a glance, but every project panel on your screen is going to show the name of a lock, whoever owns the lock on a lock project. It shows me a lock here. There's also a lock icon down here. If Mike closed this project, his name would go away, the lock would go away, this red lock would stay, meaning that I still just have this project in read-only mode. There are times where you might just want to open a project in read-only mode because you don't want to accidentally make changes to it. So having the lock on doesn't, isn't necessarily a bad thing unless you need to get in there if I needed to add sound effects. If Mike unlocked this project um, or he, he closed it on his end, um, I would have the ability to click on this red lock down here in the bottom. I don't have to close it and reopen it to get read-write access. I could click on this lock icon. Right now, it's not going to let me because Mike still owns the lock for it. That's fully understandable. The other thing I can't quite show you is if Mike makes changes to this, you'll notice in the project tab, next to the lock icon, there's an area in between this lock icon and the, the little flyout or hamburger menu that's here, a little yellow exclamation point in a triangle, a little icon will show up in that space. If that happens, that means that you're looking at a stale copy of the project. So if Mike added a bunch more sound effects and hit save, I wouldn't see those until I go to this flyout menu and in this flyout menu, I choose Refresh Project. So this is found right here. You can see it's grayed out right now because there's nothing to refresh at this point. But if Mike were to make those changes, I would see those changes update and I would have the ability to click on Refresh Project. So again, don't have to close the project and reopen it in order to see those changes happen. So hopefully this is kind of giving you a little bit of an overview of how the project locks work and uh, as well as what the green pencil, red lock, the hollow icons, solid icons, and just a little bit about how you can still use locked projects um, as an editorial tool, even if somebody else has that source bin open and they're, they're actively working in it. Please like and subscribe to check out the latest videos in this series. We're doing a whole series of videos on uh, each aspect of Premiere Productions. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.